JC with Ron Strong. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, leave me a comment, tell me what you think. Chicago, gangsters, the mob, money, drugs, guns, gambling, racketeering. They have been making movies a long time ago about all this, this lifestyle, what it is to be a, a gangster in the US for years. What is it to be a gangster? Today we're gonna to talk about one of those gangsters from Chicago. Hey, what's up, JC with Wrong Strong. Subscribe. We got some pretty cool stuff coming up, you know, and, and just talking. I've shared in the past that uh, this is a entertainment learning channel. I'm not glamorizing or in any kind of way uh, boosting about what I did in the past and how I lived my life. This is all educational history and a, a twist of my life in there to show people where you end up or where you go with this lifestyle. And today we're gonna to talk about Babyface Nelson. Hey, he's one of Chicago own. He was born in Chicago December 6, 1908 in Chi-Town. His occupation, a gangster. A gangster and a bank robber. Babyface Nelson was responsible for killing more FBI agents than any other person. At the age of 12, he was arrested for shooting one of his friends in the jaw with a gun that he found. He did a year, and then a year later he got arrested again. And uh, I have shared in the past about like my story about how it gets easier and easier to do time because it, I went from six months to a year to two years to three years and then graduated into eight and it just got i hate to say it, easier and easier and this is what happens with people that live that lifestyle that that criminal lifestyle you start graduating into bigger bids because you start becoming more of a criminal you start doing bigger crimes and this is what happens with bigger crimes come more time and like I've said in the past, you graduate from a GED to a PhD in, in, in criminology. <laughs> I always tell people that I have a, a PhD in fuckerism because I fucked up so much in my whole life. So let's get into this, to this, to this story about Babyface. A year later after he was released, after doing that year at 12, he was 13 and he started stealing cars. That's one thing that I started also doing at, almost at that same age. It's easy, easy money, and you get to have fun because you get, you know, a joyride. So he ended up getting caught, did another year, got sent up to so St. Charles. I didn't even know that St. Charles has been open, open that long, just like Joliet. He also did time in Joliet. Uh, they're, they've been around for a long time. Babyface then joined his, his gang in his mid-teens, and he moved up fast to becoming the leader. It usually happens like that when you are actually kind of smart, but you're just using your smarts for bad things. He started driving uh, bootleg uh, alcohol through the Chicago suburbs, and Babyface then became associated with the members of a suburban-based uh, gang called... I, I don't want to chop up the name because, as you guys know, I don't pronounce things pretty well, but it was T-O-U-H-Y, Thule. Tully? Toey. Toey? Uh, I've never had anything from you guys. You know I have a speech problem. <laughs> I'm not embarrassed about it. I don't know if it's like my 
uh, getting sent to Mexico and then coming back and starting all over again to learn English? Or is it my Chicago accent? I don't know what it is, but um, my my uh, girlfriend sometimes, uh, I shouldn't say girlfriend because I'm going to get in trouble. My fiance uh, makes fun of me sometimes because I say stuff and it just uh, doesn't make sense. <laughs> But it's just the way that I talk. I don't know. I don't know. But it was an Irish American uh, a gang. Uh, the mob boss actually from that gang was la later killed by the Chicago outfit. And that's a whole new, like another video that I'm working on. There is so much gangster and mob and gangs and, and all this culture in Chicago that I have video plan for i don't know how long even with the uh, narco stuff i think i'm ahead like six months right now on videos but it's so much history and like i said i share this as an educational and history and to show you where it ends up because i'm one of the lucky ones that made it out but let's get back into this because i'm going crazy the chicago outfit later uh i think it was like two years later after his release he was uh he was killed and they have classes on this now in school. Like they're, they're teaching this whole culture that evolved through um, America, you know, from from the beginning of, you know, the 1800s and all, all down this way. Uh, within two years of Babyface joining the gang, they were involved in organized crime, especially armed robbery. Big money, big money and in in all these heists and bank robberies back then. $25,000 was like a quarter million now. Big money on the jobs, big money on, on uh, jewelry heist. They've, they've made movies about this. It said that on April 21st, 1930, Babyface robbed his first bank and his take home was 4,000. That's a lot of money back then. You know, uh, uh, 4,000 is like 40 grand right now. Uh, Later, it was said that he did another another heist for jewelry, and it was twenty five thousand. So he started making more money. And this is what I mean: is that you start getting addicted to the money, you start get addicted to the rush. I don't care what anybody says. If you've lived that lifestyle, you actually get addicted to the money, the rush, the almost like getting away with your hand in the cookie jar. So you, you get addicted to it. It becomes almost like a high and you want more and more and more. I've heard so many guys say, this is my last job. This is my last run. This is my last deal. And it's never like that because you, you miss it. You miss the money. I've said it in the past. Do I miss it? Yeah, I do. Sometimes I do. And I think about it and, and I wonder. And, and, and I, it's, it's just a thought that passes your mind because... You did it for so long and you got away with it also that you think it's, it's, you could get away with it. But it's also sad because I've seen so many guys say, hey, this is my last one. And they get caught and get a life sentence. This is my last run. This is my last deal. This is my last. And that last one never came. And this is what I mean. It was also said that he stole the jewelry of the wife of the Chicago may mayor, Bill, Big Bill Thompson, valued at $18,000. She said it was a baby face kid, good looking kid, uh, maybe like me, <laughs> that stole the jewelry. Uh, he later partnered up with John Dillinger, and after his famous wooden pistol escaped from the uh, jail in Indiana, and that's a whole nother video that I, I, I'm getting ready right now, because all this, you know, um, all this comes into this American mob gangster culture that i want to make a series on uh we're even going to incorporate the movies you know shot collar goodfellas all the american me all this stuff because america's so rich in uh culture with that has to do with you know gangster mob gangs all this stuff i mean it, it, it's i guess in a way it's sad but it, it's it's it is what it is it's the truth and it has a lot, a lot of history. I'm talking about back to the 1800s, like uh, even way behind more. But it's it's a way of life, and they've made movies about it and everything. So it's 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 our history. So like I said, I share it so to you know educate people, show them 
you know, a kind of a twist with my story, where I ended up, where I, you know, where I'm at now. And then that's it, it man. Um, in 1934, uh, the big shootout with the FBI agents that claimed the life of two agents and Babyface, the most notorious, uh, he was public uh, enemy number one back then after they had killed John Dillinger. He turned into public enemy number one. So it was, you know, it was the death of the notorious gangster, Chicago gangster, Babyface Nelson. So they made a big thing of, about it, you know, and, and um, like I said, the, this lifestyle, you know, ends up in, in two places, either in jail or dead. The rush is real. The money is real. You get addicted to this lifestyle. And that's the thing. Is This is why I share my story. This is why I share episodes of small stuff. It's not that I'm glamorizing it. It's just our history and what we've grown up watching and seeing here in the United States. It is what it is. My, on my next videos, I'm going to talk about the big tuna, the boss of the Chicago outfit, Al Capone. And we're going to have a series on all this stuff. And then we're going to mix in, you know, the narco culture in there too also. But... Like I said, this is not a cooking channel. One day, I'm going to cook something. You guys are going to be surprised. But it is to educate you, entertain you, share my story with you guys. My name is JC. I am Wrong to Strong. Don't judge nobody. Give somebody a hug. Stay in your lane. Stay savage. And just stay tuned. We got lots of stuff.